the mic. All right. I'd like to welcome everybody here today on Facebook while we're, while we're doing that. I know some people are asking. Uh, we'll be starting a Facebook Live a little bit later now that we're in person. So probably somewhere about 11, 20-ish, you probably need to start watching for us to come on. So that's, that's about where we're going to be. Welcome to our Facebook listeners and welcome to everybody else this morning. Uh, this morning's uh, message is from Luke chapter 2. It's a familiar uh, passage, uh, but I want to focus on uh, one or two verses of it specifically. And so today's title is called Heavenly Host. <clears throat> a lot of interesting things. We'll pick up on our mysteries uh, after the first of the year. Uh, we're going to look at Christmas because, you know, we kind of been out and we really, really didn't finish all that, but we'll finish it up after the first of the year. Mysteries of Paul and, uh, and such. But uh, as we start into the Christmas season, I always like to do, <clears throat> you know, three or four sermons on, uh, specifically on Christmas because, you know, this is the time of celebration of our Lord coming to this earth uh, to be our Lord. And there's a lot of things going on here in this scripture more than <clears throat> I recognize because I was listening to a song this week and I'm thinking, what is this? What does this mean? I heard, I heard somebody reading this scripture. I thought, oh, wait a minute. <clears throat> there's, there's some things here we need to look at because they're very interesting to me. And when it's interesting to me, I hope you learn something or hear something that, that makes, uh, makes your week better this week <clears throat> and makes your Christmas season better. <clears throat> there's significant things in, in the scripture about Jesus and, and him coming to this earth. And, and there's specific things that we look at and, Often we miss something. You know, when we read Scripture, we, we may miss something when we go back and wait a minute. Uh, scripture said something else there that we might have been focusing on one thing and then maybe we uh, read it, but we did not catch that, that second thing that might have been said in the Scripture. So let's look at Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14 this morning. Uh, <coughs> So Luke chapter 2, from here verse, we're going to look at the situation where the shepherds receive the announcement of Jesus, but we're going to look at something else in that besides the shepherds. A lot of times we'll look at this scripture and we'll focus on the shepherds. We'll say, well, the shepherds heard the announcement. But sometimes we don't focus on who's giving that announcement or who's with the person, the, the angel specifically. And I'm going to call him Gabriel. Because every time you see an announcement, Gabriel came to Mary, told her she would be having Jesus, and now Jesus is here. And I believe Gabriel is the announcement angel. When you look at it throughout the history, there's, there's four archangels and all that. There's, specifically, we hear a lot more out of Gabriel and Michael than we do anybody else, but uh, there's others involved, but not uh, specifically this. We have Gabriel involved, and we're calling the announcement angel. But then often we focus on the shepherds, when we focus on the announcement, and we focus sometimes on the specific angel, just like I just did. But there's something else going on here, which is good, uh, because we, after I looked through some commentaries and heard some things and listened to some stuff and, and started doing some digging, and, and there's something else going on here. And if you, if you haven't seen it, I didn't see it. I didn't think about it. So I heard it read, and I'm thinking, wait a minute, there's something else here. You know, isn't that how scripture is sometimes? As you read it and read it and think, man, I've read this over and over, and then, whoa, all of a sudden there's something there that, that I missed, or it just, maybe I just read over it. It's uh, commonly uh, forgot about it. You know, we hear the Christmas story so many times during this time of year. And, and often we hear it, and we, our mind is just thinking, okay, that's the Christmas story, but there's other things. I like to find those other things. I like, to, I like to catch those other things that we miss. What about what's going on in the background? What happened here? What happened there? Uh, those interest me. Those things really interest me. And, and I don't know what the Lord just said. Hey, did you think about this? Did you think about who's with that? Well, maybe not. We're going to think about it today. We're going to look at it today. And we're going to see what is going on with these heavenly hosts. Who are they? What are they doing there? And what's their purpose? There is purpose in everything in this. There was a purpose for the shepherds to be in that field. That field, and get this, that field is, is outside of Bethlehem where 
Ruth and Boaz made it. I don't know if you knew that, but that's, that's where they were at. And they were out there, and Ruth and Boaz met out in that area. And without Ruth and Boaz, we would not have Jesus. And so there's some significance about that, that area of Bethlehem. Also, uh, we know that Gabriel uh, was the announcement angel. And there's where the shepherds heard their news of Jesus. And they followed the star and they found Jesus, didn't they? And we know that. Uh, we know that uh, this, this announcement was made about Jesus and how important it was. And we'll get to that in a minute. But, uh, but we never, I never thought about the heavenly host that was with Gabriel. I never thought about it. I just, just took it for granted. They were angels, and, and you know, they are. But what are they? Who are they? What are they doing? What are they going to do? You know, there's lots of things that we can look at this morning. So, <clears throat> Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14 say, And there was in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. The angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you this day is born in the city of David the Savior, which is Jesus, or which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, and you shall find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly there was a, with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Lord God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Let us go forward and pray at this time. Father, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for this scripture you've laid before us today, that we would open your word and study your word. Father, just help us to understand and, and to comprehend what you have for us today. Father, that we would walk out of here, or follow those on Facebook this morning, would understand who Jesus is and, and why he came for us at this time. Well, we'll just pray that we would recognize the birth of Jesus as the, the beginning of his walk here on earth, and that his walk in, here on earth ended with dying uh, for us, and follow, it, it, then it does not end because he is resurrected. Lord, we just thank you for Jesus and what he means to us and that he is alive and he is a living Savior. But in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. <clears throat> First thing I want to briefly look at and kind of kind of went over it a little bit is the announcement. You know, we have the announcement of Jesus. We, we have this official first announcement that Jesus is born. Okay, this is the first. This is the this is the Facebook page. This is the the, the front page of the newspaper, this is it. This is the first announcement that we see of the Savior being born. The first people that heard that Jesus was born, besides Mary, Joseph, and the animals, is the shepherds. The shepherds are the first people to know on this earth outside of the stable. Now, why would it be the shepherds? Of course, you know the shepherd represents the pastor. The shepherd represents Jesus. The shepherd represents who Jesus is. Jesus is our pastor. He is our interceder. He is the one who comforts us through the Holy Spirit. Jesus is our shepherd. And so the shepherds likely were the first to be known, uh, know about this. Part of it because of the symbolic, the, the symbolic meaning of the shepherd and who the shepherd is and what he does. Either they were watching their flocks. They were keeping count of them. They were keeping them in a place of safety. And that's what Jesus does for us, isn't it? Jesus is the ultimate shepherd. He is our shepherd of our flock. So we see the announcement, the angel telling them, uh, coming to them. Now, the first thing the angel always says is, don't fear, right? Fear not. Well, can you imagine an angel? You're out there in the middle of the night. It's dark. You've got a fire, you know, going, and they're, they're trying to watch over the sheep. And all of a sudden, light comes out of the sky. It's just like daylight, the glory of the Lord shone upon them. And do you know the glory of the Lord shone, shone upon them is light, isn't it? So all of a sudden it went from dark to daylight and all of a sudden this thing comes out of the sky and it's an angel. Who's going to be afraid? It says they were afraid. They were, they were very afraid. They're scared. You can imagine that, you know, modern life, that, you know, they probably had candles and things. Modern life, they had a campfire, maybe giving some light. All of a sudden it's midnight, it's, it's 
it's dark, and all of a sudden, and just immediately it's daylight. And said so they were free. The first thing the angel told them is to, to fear not. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of what I'm about to tell you because what I'm about to tell you is good tidings of great joy. I bring you good tidings of great joy. I give you an announcement of great joy this morning. Amen. Isn't it great joy to know Jesus? That Jesus came on this earth. It's, it's great joy. And you know what? It didn't say happiness. Because remember, happiness is temporary. Great joy. Joy is permanent in your heart. If you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, your joy in Christ is something that is going with you to eternity. Forever. You know, <clears throat> he gives them this great announcement of great joy, this good tidings, and, and not just the, the shepherds, it says to all people. You know, the announcement itself is Jesus is coming. Jesus is here. Jesus is wrapped in rags, laying in a manger over here, and you all need to know that he is born and he is the Savior. That's the good tidings to all people, that he is the Savior for all that accept him. Amen? Not just, I mean, he, he wants everybody to. But whoever accepts Jesus, he's their Savior. Amen? Amen. Now remember, not everybody, unfortunately, not everybody will know Jesus when they die. And then we've seen that. We know that. Now we pray that they would accept Him. We ask God to influence them and to lead, lead them by His Holy Spirit and draw them. But we can't draw them. Only Jesus can. Only God can through His Holy Spirit. That's the only way. The only way to God is through Jesus Christ come to know him and accept the fact that he has, he has died and buried and resurrected. That he is alive. He's a living Savior. We don't serve a dead Savior. Amen? We don't. Amen. Amen. We don't serve a dead Savior. We serve a living Savior. And so the announcement comes that Jesus is coming, but there's some words here, and you know, you know my, you may not know my pathway, but you're about to find out on this. I love definitions. I love learning what something means. And how it relates to God's word. You know, the meaning of these words is, is, is deeper than just a few, you know, just a simple word this morning. So here's what we're looking at. It says that whenever these angel, this angel came, it said, suddenly there was with them a, with them a multitude, with the angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts. So I'm thinking, who are these heavenly hosts? Are they angels? Are they people? Are they what are they? All of a sudden they were there. Now the assumption, and it's correct, they're celestial beings, which is angels. Okay? Now, now that's the assumption. That's the correct assumption. If you're if you're thinking these are angels, we call them angels. The the uh, commentaries and the things that I've read call them celestial beings. Which word celestial, of course, means angel. So or we would translate into English words or whatever we use angel. But let's look at one first word. The multitude. How many? Well, how many is a multitude? Well, you know what? How many can put a number on multitude? You can't, can you? You can say that's a lot. You know, you say there's a multitude of something. If you say there's a multitude of something, you know, uh, this year I've noticed uh, while, while deer hunting, that there is a multitude of doves. They're beautiful animals. They're God's animals. I, I, I like doves. Uh, I don't eat doves. <laughs> I've tried them, but I don't eat them. They're beautiful. Man. And they, I like to hear them, and I enjoy them, and there's a multitude of those out there. There's a multitude of a lot of things. There's just not been a multitude of deer. <laughs> just a few. But you know, when you look out there's a, and see a crowd of people, you say there's a multitude of people there, meaning that you can't really number those people, but there's a lot. So in this situation, we, we, we find a state of being many, uh, a great number or a great number of people, or in this case, a great number of hosts, heavenly hosts. 
And so we find that, that with this angel was an impressive number, a multitude, an impressive number. You know, we can put, we can guess, you know, five to 10,000, 10,000, you know, 9,000. We don't know. But we do know the entire sky was bright with the glory of God, that it was, it was just like day. And we do know that they saw this angel, and they also saw the multitude, the group, the, the, the who knows how many. Does anybody know how many angels God has? <laughs> no. We don't know how many celestial beings there are. No. We don't have a clue. We just know that John, when he entered in, in, in the book of Revelation, when he entered into the spirit, into the, the picture of heaven, and saw heaven, and walked into walked in and, and painted us a picture of it with the word. He said there was a number that could not be numbered, right? I mean, there was no, num there was no number. I can't put a number on it. I can't tell you how many people were there, but there were a multitude of heaven and hells. A multitude of people. Number that no man can number, that no man, see that, can number on the God name. So in this case, we cannot put a number on a multitude, but we can know that a multitude is a whole lot. You know, the sky may have been completely full of this multitude of hosts. I love it. Because these, these men were afraid of this. I mean, it was impressive, wasn't it? It was scary. These men were afraid. Because they, they were overwhelmed. Fear is an overwhelming uh, uh, sense. And, uh, fear, is a, fear is something that often is overwhelming to us. We, if we're afraid, we're afraid for our life or somebody else's life. And these guys were afraid that uh, these guys were going to kill us or something. You know, this, is, this is scary. And so that, that overwhelming feel, fear, uh, feeling of fear, uh, the angel knew they were afraid, of course, right? It's scary. But tell them not, not fear. Because we're good people. We're good angels. We're good beings. So that leads us to the next things. And of course, heavenly host means celestial. Then we, we move on to the word host. And the definition of host, you may not believe what I'm about to tell you. I almost didn't comprehend just for a minute. What's the word host mean? Not hostess or someone who hosts. But, but if there's a host of people, a multitude of people, what does the word host mean? Can anybody give me one word? Together? Guys, uh, it's deeper than that. <laughs> I was surprised. No, I'm serious, I was surprised. And I don't know if anybody in the military would understand this, but it's army. Foot army. Inf infantry army. The word host links up with the word army, which specifically army is uh, foot patrol, foot, you know, land on land. And we'll get to that in a minute because I got the definition of army here too. But host leads to something that is done on land or something that is done on earth. Interesting. So we're, we're, we're linking something here between the heavenly host, the celestial beings, and earth. So wait a minute. These heavenly hosts are a multitude. There's a whole bunch of them. Army's usually a whole bunch of them, right? A lot of people. A military. It's the kind of military. And if you do a, a uh, if the Army does a land maneuver, uh, we don't do it one by one. <laughs> we do it with a lot. We do it with a multitude. We do it with an army. Are we in the Lord's Army? Amen? We are. So think about this. We're a multitude. We're a host. The word host doesn't mean host somebody. It means there's a lot. And the host means they're on the ground and they're land specific. What are these hosts going to do? Now, it's interesting because it's getting a little deeper. But these hosts, these heavenly hosts, these celestial hosts, have a job. Did you know that? Didn't know this. Didn't think about this. Read over it a million times. Bunch of times. And never noticed. These, these, these folks have a job. Listen. 
it says in the definition of army, it's a large organized body of armed personnel trained for war, especially on land. A unit capable of independent action and, uh, and consisting usually of a headquarters, think about that just a minute, or two or more corps and auxiliary troops. That's a multitude. That's a lot. When you start splitting them up, you got divisions, you got all this stuff. That's why the army is in divisions and the military. Any of your military uh, groups are all in divisions. They all have their specific job and their specialty that they do. That's the way it is. And without that, there's no organization. And they all report to corps or auxiliaries or headquarters. Now think about the Lord's army. Where's the headquarters? It's where God is, isn't it? He's the boss. He's, he's the top general, folks. He's the top dog. Jesus, God, is the, is, the, is the headquarters. Where God is, is headquarters. Headquarters is in heaven. Jesus is beside of him. And he's the salvation auxiliary, right? <laughs> the core. Without him, we can't be saved. We can't get to God without Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is, is the land auxiliary, right? I mean, I'm trying to do this in somewhat military terms. I'm not, I'm not the best, but look at it that way. Is that all three of these in the Trinity have to be there, have to be present here, or there's no salvation. So here, what do these guys do? Well, there's other, there's other things. One more thing I can share with you, share with you that, that this definition is more biblical. This definition tells us what these heavenly, heavenly hosts are doing. And then we'll go back to the scripture and we're going to see what they're doing. Okay? What the responsibility is. Because they have a responsibility. Here's, here's the next definition, and this is the last one. But the definition of army. A body of persons organized to advance a cause. That's the best one, isn't it? A body of persons organized to advance a cause. Who are these heavenly hosts? Well, first of all, there's a bunch of them. There's a multitude. Second of all, they are an army. They are trained. Second thing, the third uh, the first, uh, first thing is there are a multitude, there's a bunch of them, there's an army. Third thing, the definition of army, is that they are organized to advance a cause. Think about that. What are we advancing? What, are we, what cause are we advancing on this earth? Cause of Christ, right? Jesus. Why were they there with the shepherds and the angels and all that stuff? Why? Now, one of the commentaries we, uh, that, that I dug up, or we, Susie actually shared it, and got to reading in it, looking at it, listening to it, and it's like, wow. These celestial beings, this multitude, this army, these hosts, these heavenly hosts, were responsible for advancing a cause from this point forward. What point? The point of Jesus entering this earth. You know what their cause is? They, you know what their reason is and what their job is? Their job is to advance the name of Jesus on this earth. You see that? I never saw that. You better see that. If you did, I would have had you, but we can't. But I never saw that. Ever. I read this over and over and over again. I went right over that. And those are angels and never thought about that. They have a job. It's awesome. To know that there are angelic beings, there are celestial beings, there are hosts, there's an army, there's a multitude of them, there's a whole bunch of them here on this earth assisting the name of Jesus getting spread on this earth. Amen. I love it. Because that's God's cause. That's what God wanted. These celestial beings, this multitude, from this point forward, from this announcement on, are assigned. To the cause. That's awesome. I love it. When I get to digging, I love, I love finding stuff like this. Because
Because I've, I've said I've read it so many times. But what did they do? The last thing we're going to look at is what they did today. What did they do? Verse 14. That's all you got to say. Verse 14. Because what they're saying is what they do. You see this? They're advancing the cause of Jesus, which is the gospel. But specifically what they do, it says 14, verse 14, glory to God. So for their first assignment is to give glory to God for Jesus. They're praising God for the Savior. You see that? You never saw it. Blind. Walk right over it. Read over it. These heavenly hosts are assigned, these celestial beings are assigned to giving God the glory on this earth through Jesus. The second thing they're assigned to do, this is not an army in battle for war. Do you see this? They are, they are trained. They're highly trained. They're celestial beings. They're God's angels. It's God's people. But they're equipped to proclaim Jesus as the Savior who will bring, if people will trust in Him, who will bring peace on earth. You see this? That their initiative is to, is to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus, in order to bring peace on this earth. Because there is no peace on this earth until you know Jesus. Amen. The peace that passeth all understanding. Wow, those scriptures are starting to come together now. That's awesome. I love it. Now, there's something else. The last thing. It's real simple. Is there anybody in here that would ever wish bad will on somebody? Never. Christian, you would never, ever wish bad will. What's bad will? That the will of God would bring bad in some of you? I don't think that could happen. Bad, I don't know. Evil or whatever. God allows consequences of actions. I promise. I don't think God would ever bring harsh will or bad will against anybody unless they deserve that punishment, which the only way they deserve it is not to accept Jesus as their Savior. Last minute, Holy Spirit, right? So, these angels or these celestial beings or this host or this army or this multitude, whatever you want to call them, I've got several words for them. And that in advancing the cause of Jesus, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, they bring glory to God and they promote peace on earth and goodwill, which is God's will, the only good will on this earth is God's will. That they pray, that they, they bring forth goodwill toward men, toward all men. This word men means mankind. Okay? And so that, that these angel or these celestial beings are here on this earth still because God hasn't sent Jesus back yet to, for the rapture. And they are promoting Jesus, the gospel. So when we go tell somebody the gospel, these angelic beings, the Holy Spirit of God, are working toward leading somebody to Jesus, calling somebody. Amen. Now, this is all part of God's drawing men or mankind to him. You know, we pray that God would, through his Holy Spirit and through his presence, what is his presence? His Holy Spirit, plus he's added these angels, these other things going on. He's, he's, there, you know there's a spirit, we, we can go farther, you know there's a spiritual warfare in this in this land around us. Who do you think's fighting? Which army do you think's doing this? The good army is right here we're reading about. It. See this? They're prepared to bring peace against the demons of hell. They're prepared. And so here we are. 
And they're doing everything they do to see goodwill or God's will come to mankind. Let's dig it through. That was two words, nothing else. <laughs> but it's awesome that their celestial being is being used to further the gospel, which would bring glory to God and peace on earth and goodwill on earth. That's who Jesus is. And he's the only place we can get it. Who Jesus is. Now this morning we need to pray that every time we share the gospel is that the Holy Spirit leads and that God uses these angelic beings to fight the war. Amen? Spiritual war. Satan is doing everything he can to bring destruction to the church. He wants the church destroyed. He's done everything to keep us away from the house of God. I'm not saying he's a cause of COVID. I'm just saying he's using it. You know, he'll use every opportunity to destroy the church. Because we're the ones about Jesus. We have the Holy Spirit and the heavenly host supporting us. And if God 